Welcome back to Income Trading 101. Today we're going to take a look at natural gas uh, futures and I'll also take a look at the UNG ETF since most of you guys won't be uh, trading futures in your personal account. Uh, but some of you uh, will trade the ETF which, um, which uh, moves off of natural gas too. Today is Friday, August the 6th, so happy Friday to you. And if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel, please do go ahead and click the subscribe button. I also appreciate a couple likes on the video because that lets more uh, more folks see it. So um, let's dive in. So we'll just take a look at a little bit of uh, my favorite three indicators to start off with. The moving averages, the uh, momentum oscillator from MACD, and then I'll turn around and do a little bit of... Um, you know, Fibonacci is relevant, or uh, we'll take a look at uh, some other uh, just trends and trend lines and just getting a better view of where this might be going visually. So we're going to use the 10 day, the 20 and the 60 to start off. And I'm looking at the data in the day time frame. We'll drop it down here in just a minute. So look at this market. So for those of you not familiar with natural gas, this market has been kind of a dud for a while. Um, I mean, look at these lows back here. Uh, and this is the rolling front month natural gas. So each month has its own contract. Um, they are aggregating all of those uh, one, month da uh, one month data uh, for the various contracts and turning it into one consistent, uh, one consistent uh, data stream. So. We do have this high from back in 2018, and then it came off and kind of stayed low, bounced back a little bit. Um, so, hey, we will get to look at a little Fibonacci retracement. But, uh, yeah, this goes back. So we only have it back to 13. I remember trading this uh, and seeing the pop that happened back in 2008, 2007, 2008, when oil futures were hitting their all-time highs or all-time highs at the moment so anyway let's pull this back in I just wanted to do that to get a sense of where we, we've come from show you where we've come from in this uh, in this contract so got roughly a year worth of data here a little more than that so at the daily level we definitely are bullish you've got I mean you see this upward nice upward trending move you've got the 10 day higher than the 20 higher than the 60 Let's take it down to the hourly, drop down to the lower. So in the lower section, we have a period of consolidation, which is typically an, an indication that a trend is either about to um, change direction or it's just taking a pause. So at the moment, you've got the 10 day uh, is lower than the 20 and higher than the 60. So I consider that a period of consolidation. Um, I like it more when there's a pure... Like over here, back in July, you had a clean, you know, uh, bullish situation. Over here in late July, you had a clear bearish situation. And uh, where the 10 days below the 20 and uh, below the 60. But in these periods of consolidation, you just have to kind of be careful. Let's look at the 30 minute, get a better sense of what's going on in the ultra short frame. So at the ultra, we've got a scenario where they're all in line for bearish, right? You've got the 60 higher than the 20 higher than the uh, the 10 day if you can't see that visually here then you can always and I can stretch it out but you can always turn around and just look at the numerical values over here in the upper left hand corner and I, I am using trading view as my charting software it comes pre-built with a bunch of different indicators uh, pretty much anything that I like to use from something as simple as moving averages all the way up to Keltner and Bollinger Bands and all sorts of EMA, uh, like it's just a ton of stuff is already pre-built. So very helpful. All right, let's take this down to the 15 minute and see if that's also going to be bearish. So the 15 minute, and I'm looking at the numbers, essentially all three moving, uh, both the 10 and the 20 period are right on top of each other. There are, um, uh, right now, uh, as of that last click, they are on top of each other, 4.14. Uh, and the 60-day is just uh, higher by those uh, than a penny. 60-period, uh, rather, is higher by a penny. So that's it. Um, we had a couple of bearish signals, 
a couple of consolidating periods and then the bullishness of the of the daily let's fix that view so that we can use it and uh and move forward so i do like that the daily is so strong and you know the other thing i don't do often we can definitely go further out look at weekly data so for people who are trading sw like swing traders who aren't just looking to hold for days but possibly weeks and months so in, in natural gas you have still a strong bullish sentiment on the weekly and the monthly is consolidated because the uh, 60 is between the 10 and the 20 so you would wait for that sick for that 20 to pull forward the 20 month to pull higher and then you'll be uh you know in a period of bullishness at even the monthly level right very interesting when you when you change the view the timing it changes how you look at the data and changes your analysis completely so uh that's why it's good to flip around and check out different views all right let's go ahead and get rid of the uh, moving averages we're going to dive into the momentum indicators. So let's use a little MACD, a little MACD action for us. And on the daily, we had a nice bullish crossover back in March, and we really have just been oscillating. We crossed the zero line. We've been oscillating bullish since then. That is very clear. Um, let's take it down to one hour. And at the lower time frames, we get quite a bit more oscillating. So. Um, even though this looks flat, this is not flat up here. It's just a flat view, flattened view. But at the uh, one hour, you obviously get a lot more oscillation like this uh, bearish. Uh, and then it never really crossed. It didn't cross until markets crossed the zero line until markets actually did go bearish. And then you had uh, once again, you had a bullish uh, indicator back here on July 28th. And it crossed the zero line. We had a bearish, another bullish. So, I mean, if you're using the hourly, I, I, I don't advise using MACD on some of the lower time frames because you just get lots of gyrations. I mean, you're, you're selling one minute, you're buying the next, you're selling, you're buying. Oh, oops, you got to buy. It just becomes too much. Um, so at the 30 minute and the 15 minute level, to me, the MACD is less relevant. Uh, even the one hour is a bit much, but I do like using the one day on the daily. I think this is really valuable. And then we can even take this over to the monthly uh, and the weekly uh, just to get a better sense. Because just with the longer time frames, um, you get you get better analysis. So nice crossover, um, nice crossover here back in April. It crossed the zero line in August. Look how long it took for it to cross the zero line. And it's really been off to the races since then with a little bit of pullback. But then again, it stayed above the zero line. So which is an indication that the previous trend is going to just be continuing. Just like back here, you saw this uh, back in, wow, that's December of 18 uh, in the weekly data. We saw a crossover, a bearish crossover. It shortly thereafter in February crossed over the zero line. And it really, you know, both both uh, both indicators, the, the blue and the red line, the MACD line and the signal line, they stayed in negative territory for almost two years. Isn't that amazing? Um, anyway, uh, that is it for our MACD analysis. Let's pull this back to the daily. Um, I don't know why I'm in the mood to uh, show you guys weekly time frames. We hadn't done that, done that on any of the videos. But um, again, it's great to be able to manipulate the data to make sure that you see a clear picture. You never want to want to get a partial view. You really want to look at the view, focus on the view that matches your trading time frame, right? So let's uh, let's do this. We're gonna go. Um, First off, I wanted to look at a little Fibonacci analysis. And we're going to analyze it from this last uh, big move. Uh, we're going to go from the tippy top up here to the bottom over there and just pull it all the way over just so we get a sense of where we are in 
this analysis. So I'll pull that down too. So we are right now right at the 78.6% uh, level of retracement of the last big move. And this is the move that started in November of 2018 and didn't have a low until June of 20, June of 2020. And we've really been pull, been uh, heading back north since then, with the period of consolidation in between. But uh, 78.6 uh, retracement to where we are. And you can see how at the 61.8% level, we ended up getting some, some uh, support that also coincided with a little bit of support here and some resistance there. So uh, very interesting, very, very interesting. Um, the 38.2% level of that move also played a little bit of resistance. We saw it as support back here in March of 19, support uh, and resistance back in early November uh, of, of 2019. And you can see how it was resistance in August of 20, resistance in December of 20, January of 20, uh, before heading lower and just fully breaking out so um man so much in these charts i hope yeah i hope you guys love technical analysis as much as i do but not just for analysis sake but because i use this stuff to trade you know and i'm i'm mostly am an option trader i think i've mentioned that before uh but um yeah i mean this is this is real like this is one of the ways one of the big ways that i make uh, make a living, make a nice living. So, uh, and I love teaching other people how to do the same. Let's see if we can pull that on across just to get a sense of how often, look at that, resistance, resistance. It really did play resistance here because we only broke out for a few days and pulled on back. Resistance, resistance there, pushed above. Resistance, resistance, pushed above. And then finally, uh, stayed above. I'm also going to give a uh, just a horizontal line here. That to me is so uh, 80 cents higher than where we are now is the is the most recent high in natural gas. So that could be really uh, quite interesting, right? Uh, if we push up there, first off, the question is, do we have enough steam? to push up there and you know we're still in the summertime months people are using uh you know more electricity for their for their uh ac units but we'll see how much higher we end up pushing in natural gas um we could easily get i mean this has been a nice rally so i wouldn't be afraid or wouldn't worry much about uh getting a pullback i want to expand this period here out just a little bit see if there is a uh so we're right in this area um oh, let me tighten it back up i really wanted to get a look at at um the the bottom of this period and see where the support and resistance was just so that i'm uh cognizant of it for our current price chart right and we are right in there right now. We're right in it right now. So um, that's the same, the same sort of uh, support area that we saw back in 2018. We'll see if that ends up playing resistance or if we're going to be able to push through in natural gas. If we do push through, there really aren't any strong support and resistance levels for, for a while. Let's expand even more because we know that this price chart went higher all the way up here back in 2014. So whether or not, and I realize too that this isn't just a technical commodity. This is this commodity has a lot of fundamentals. So you're talking about people actually using this. It is landlocked for the most part. We've been exporting some natural gas over the last. Um, you know, last year, uh, last couple years, but that's still a relatively new phenomenon. Essentially, this was a landlocked commodity that there's a lot of in the United States, and we use it for mostly for for energy. So we're not; it hasn't entered the uh, the car and truck uh, driving uh, demand that much. So, um, 
anyway, I can keep going forever on this. This is really interesting. I did want to do one last thing. We're going to compare with the UNG because I know many of you will actually be able to trade the UNG and not not not, not necessarily natural gas uh, futures. So um, you can see how closely the UNG tracked back 2018, went higher. Look at how closely it tracked 2019, 2020. But it really has uh, uh, the returns, the returns for this year for this last run up have not been as significant um, as in as we've seen in the in the actual futures contract, the one month futures contract. So um, that might be a case of a couple scenarios. These ETFs, it's important to know what they're made of. Sometimes they're made up of like a front month contract, a rolling uh, front month. Sometimes they stay in the uh, second and third month. That will affect the returns here because uh, I'm, I'm using a front month contract for the futures as well. Um, you just want to you just want to make sure you're getting a good a good fit, a good look. Um, let's see. I mean, if I there you go, if I extend it out, it gets a little closer. It looks a little better. But there is definitely a disconnect um, at one point uh, with regards to. Um, the return profile of the UNG ETF. But yeah, this orange is the ETF uh, UNG. Uh, you can definitely trade that. It trades right now. It looks like it trades for $14.59. So it's much more like trading a stock on natural gas futures rather than getting the actual volatility uh, dynamics that you get with trading a futures contract. So, hey, that's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. I obviously love uh, talking markets. Um, I use technical analysis for both for uh, commodities, for stock, for crypto. We'll be looking at some crypto this weekend. And uh, that's it. So definitely subscribe to the channel. Uh, click the little bell so that you're notified when we make new videos. And as always, happy trading.